before we, we start with the, the formal uh, section of the press conference, we wanted to take some time to talk about um, the issue that's now facing boxing in New York with the passage of uh, a bill that got passed over the summer um, that inserted an insurance requirement that's not required in any state in the Union other than New York that's not required in any country in the world, um, and that only exists here. And the problem with the insurance is not that we uh, don't want to protect the health and safety of our fighters. We do. There's a provision in this, this new law that increased certain limits and made them um, equivalent to the best protections that fighters have anywhere in the country. What we're objecting to is a provision that got inserted, which in effect has ended boxing in New York. When we have the press conference in a few minutes to announce January 14th, um, what, what this effect is is, A, it's a call to action that this law needs to be changed, that we need to be able to get insurance for boxing in New York, but it's also us taking our sport back. Um, it's not okay to stop New York resident promoters, managers, fighters, inspectors, and people in the boxing business to prevent them from earning a living. It's not okay. It's not okay to pass a law that goes into effect on September 1st with the knowledge that nobody in the state of New York is able to abide by it. Think about that. The law passed, it went to effect September 1st, and the insurance required is not available in the state of New York. No policy has been approved by New York State that boxing promoters can acquire um, to do a show in New York. When we start this press conference, we're going to start it with confidence, and you buy your tickets because I promise you there'll be a show January 14th. We have lawyers on it, we have insurance people on it, and we're going to pay whatever we have to pay for insurance to make sure that January 14th happens here. But that doesn't solve the bigger problem, because right now boxing is closed for business in the state of New York. And, and part of what I wanted to do here now, um, we're joined, by the way, by a dignitary, and I'm very, very grateful to have our borough president, our Brooklyn borough president, Eric Adams, here with us. Thank you for your support. Um, and to have Rosie Perez, who needs no introduction, but uh, one of the greatest supporters of boxing uh, that there is. But Boyd and, and, and Heather are up here because you need to see the faces of what was done here and what was created here. Um, the idea that no New York fighter can earn a living right now in their own state is simply unacceptable. The idea that a law got passed supposedly to legalize MMA in New York and the effect it had was to completely freeze the boxing industry and put us out of business temporarily, that is unacceptable and there should be a state and federal investigation of how this happened. You know, I'm a simple guy, I, mean, I grew up in, 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 on Bedford Avenue in Brooklyn. And you know, we look at things very simply here. So if something doesn't look straight, you wonder if it's crooked. And, and that's where I am right now because I can't figure out how this is being allowed to happen. And I'm very grateful to Mayweather Promotions, Floyd Mayweather, Leonard Ellerby, um, to Showtime, Stephen Espinosa, to the Barclays Center, uh, Brett Yormark, to everyone involved in this promotion who are all collectively standing up and saying enough's enough, we're announcing a fight card. And yeah, I promise you it's gonna happen, but I'm not gonna make believe that there's not a little bit of risk here, because there is. And you know, there are an awful lot of people in this room. You see Iran Barkley and Mark Breland standing here. Uh, there, are, there are fighters all over the room we invited. I'm not gonna go through the name, names of them, but they're here. There are other promoters, Joe DeGuardia of Star Boxing. My Broadway boxing series right now is in effect out of New York. We're running Saturday night in, in, in Foxwoods in Connecticut because we have no choice. Star Boxing has had to move its shows out of New York. There are no Star Boxing series in New York right now. Um, Judah Brothers Promotions, they're here. They can't run a show. There are loads of fighters here who are, who are not active. And on the stage, I have a couple um, that I want to introduce to you. Um, the first of which is a, a woman that's, uh, she's been known as the First Lady of DBE. Now I'm lucky enough to have a number of first ladies of DBE, um, but she's as recognizable figure as there is in women's boxing in New York. Um, Heather has always fought at least every quarter, and um, she was going to fight in this building in what we hoped would be a, have been a big fight card in December, and that fight card had to be canceled because of, of this issue. Um, there was an October date being held in this building, 
that had to be canceled because of this issue. And when Heather called me and said, do you have a fight for me? Um, and you know, women's boxing, things were beginning to change. And, and you'll hear more about those changes soon, and it's a good thing. But, but female boxers have been totally reliant on their ability to fight where they're from, to have their fan base buy tickets, and to earn money based upon the fact their attractions in the city or state in which they live. And Heather's become a very big attraction in New York. So whatever purse I would have paid her in December would have been increased by a percentage of the number of tickets she sold. And when I called, when Heather called me and said, you know, we got the fight in December and I told her we didn't, um, she first cried and then she uh, realized that she's got a young daughter to support and an apartment to uh, pay for in Dumbo. And um, she pulled herself together and made plans that she had to make to earn a living. Um, so I'd like to bring up, uh, you know, to represent the people affected by this law, which, by the way, is not helping the self health and safety of our fighters. They're running to other states that have worse protections than New York. They're fighting in states where all you need is an AIDS test. You don't even need a head test. They're leaving New York to go to places that their life's in danger because they can't earn a living in their own state. And I'd like the state assembly and the state senate, I'd like the, the legislators to explain to me why this happened. I'd like the governor's office to explain to me why nothing's been done to either freeze this or, or, or change this so that people can earn a living until it's fixed. Something funky is going on here and it needs to be fixed. And today is the first step in fixing it. So I'd first like to bring up Heather Hardy. Hi. Um, I think that sometimes legislatures and lawmakers have trouble attaching a face to their choices. And this is my plea to the governor and to New York State to bring a resolution to this issue. I'm that face. <laughs> I'm more than just a boxer. I'm a single parent wondering how I'm gonna put food on the table and pay my rent since the December show here has been canceled. This sport of boxing is bigger than the people in the ring. This is our livelihood, and I'm asking you, please don't take that away. I'd also like to announce that thanks to Lou DiBella and Shannon Knapp, I'll be making my MMA debut with Invicta the first quarter of this year, early this year. I'm not leaving boxing. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> I'll be right back here with boxing in March, uh, hopefully for my, worst, my first world title shot. MMA embraces its female fighters, and 2016 was showing so many strides towards equality for female boxers. Thanks to promoters like Lou DiBella and Mr. Mayweather, women are seeing opportunities that were almost unheard of five years ago. So thank you, and I really look forward to keeping the momentum going next year. <laughs> you know, I, I failed to mention the New York State Athletic Commission. And um, since I'm going to have to work with them, and I, I've always been able to work effectively with them, I don't want to insult everybody, but at the moment, you're putting me out of work, so I'm going to say what i got to say. And New York State Athletic Commission, you were given the, the authority by the law to make regulations um, that would alter the law, if necessary. Well, if putting us out of business doesn't make that necessary, what does? And maybe you shouldn't have jobs any longer, guys, because with no boxing, you're simply not doing that much, are you? So I'd like to see something, some indication, even some reach out to the fighters, some public statement from the commission that they care about people like Heather, that they care about the fighters that are in this room that are unable to earn a living right now, that they care about Joe DeGuardia's employees and my employees who are sitting there worrying about 200, 2017. And if not for the power of a Floyd Mayweather and a Showtime and a Barclays Center, we wouldn't be standing here today. And even standing here today, we're doing it almost as an act of, I don't want to say disobedience, but an act of like saying it's a call to arms. We're, we're doing a fight card January 14th, people. You know, figure out a way to help us do it. Um, Boyd Melson. Uh, is a captain in the United States Army Reserve. Um, as good a person as I've ever promoted. His record is 15 and 1 and 1. He's a better human being than he is a fighter. Um, he's donated almost every purse of his career, I think every purse of his career, to a charity he started um, called Fight to Walk, which was uh, raising money for you know, stem cell research 
and uh, attempting to bring a, a cure to, uh, to people that are, have paralysis and are, are unable to walk. Um, Boyd's made a decision he wants to turn his life over to public service, and he was looking forward to a retirement fight uh, this month. Come on, people in the back, if you could quiet down. I can't hear myself think, which is the problem anyway. Um, but B Boyd uh, was going to do a retirement fight in New York City. He's, uh, there's a big heroin problem in New York City right now, particularly in the borough of Staten Island. And um, Boyd wanted me to promote a show for him in New York City that would have been his retirement show and would have been a fundraiser for this charity that's fighting um, drug addiction and, and heroin addiction in Staten Island. Instead of that show occurring, Boyd is fighting Saturday night in Foxwoods, Connecticut. I urge you to come down. The Coval of Ward fight will be there also if you want to see it, but I urge you to come down to see him fight. Um, but it's really sort of pathetic that he has to leave his home and have his retirement fight in another state where his, the people that follow him and buy tickets for him and support his causes have to either drive three and a half hours or not be there. It's, it's terrible. And, and, and you know, this is again the impact of what Albany did to boxing. And um, I'd like to bring up um, United States Army Reserve Captain Boyd Milson. So almost six years ago to the day, I had my very first fight in New York. And my purse, I donated $1,500. You fast forward to present day, 17 fights, boxing in New York or Atlantic City, almost all New York though, turned into $400,000 we've raised because of boxing in New York. In New York. And the fans in New York coming to support this vision. I came out of retirement right now because in Staten Island, through September, they had 74 reported deaths overdosing to heroin. 74. And they said the number may be 30% higher. I had a meeting with the DA out there, Mike McMahon. Called Lou, said I need to do something. I gotta make a change here. Now here's the challenge, again, if you're not a real, real big name in this sport, you have to sell tickets to generate a purse to donate. It's how it works, if A then B. You take our legs away from us, we can't walk. Right now, I have to leave. I have to leave this state where the ticket sales would have flooded in. My purse is not as much. The amount of money I can give to help try to combat human beings who are dying, who are sick due to heroin, I can't generate. When it was in New York, 400,000 over 17 fights. So I'm forced to leave. I will do this. Nevertheless, the last thing I'm going to put this in, Shame on this policy for the people that made it for not doing their due diligence. Instead of choosing an arbitrary number, they should have met with the insurance underwriters and said how much is the most you're willing to underwrite and make that the amount before they arbitrarily pick a number. Should have made it a billion dollars. Why a million? Why stop? You're paralyzing this sport in New York and we will not stand for this. Thank you. Heather just wanted me to give her apologies. Being a single mom, she's got to go pick up her daughter, so she's, she's going to leave. Re real life problems. Or not really problems, real life. Um, and, and last, I'm going to close with a good friend of mine, and, and, and you know, she always does whatever she can to help boxing in New York. And um, her heart is always with the fighter. That's who she is. Her heart's always with the underdog. That's why I love her so much. My friend Rosie Perez. Good afternoon, everybody. How's everyone feeling? Okay. Boxing is worldwide. You don't play American football in the Philippines, but you do box in the Philippines. You don't play baseball in Sub-Saharan Africa, but they do have boxing leagues in Sub-Saharan Africa. And the United States of America has contributed to boxing like no other. And that's saying a lot, especially with the UK, okay? This sport I was raised on. This sport gave me the courage and the tenacity to know that I could over overcome any type of obstacle there is. That's what boxing did for me. And that's why I'm here, because I want to give back to boxing. There are so many young boys and girls out there who are thinking about a boxing career, who don't have any other options, 
who live in neighborhoods where there is crime, who live in rural areas that there's nothing else to do. These young boys and girls want to put all their energy into this sport. How are we going to support them? How are we going to support them? What promoter are going to sign those young boys and girls, the next Mayweathers, the next Keith Thurmans, the next Danny Garcias? How are we going to support them when they're not going to be able to afford to sign them because of this insurance issue? Also, boxing is not the UFC. I have nothing against the UFC. I like the UFC. Ronda Rousey's my girl, one badass bitch. But the UFC is like a conglomerate. The UFC is like the NFL. It's like the umbrella of MMA. We don't have that in boxing. We have individual boxing promoters, individual boxing managers, individual boxing publicists. We have individual trainers. So each time they got to pay out. I don't want to reiterate that every, everything that everyone else says, but I want to say this. My heart swelled the first time I saw a fight at the Barclays. To be able to walk from my backyard, literally. Okay, I didn't walk, I had high heels. You know, I like to look cute for a fight. To take a car, five minutes, and go to the Barclays Center and see a match. That was Bernard Hopkins, right, with, uh, with, uh, versus uh, Cloud. It was here. I got to toss up the ring. It was a dream come true for me. Don't take that away. Don't take it away from the fans. They're talking about the boxers and their livelihoods. That is 100% that is in jeopardy. But it's also the enjoyment of the boxing fan. I am the number one boxing fan here in New York, maybe in all of America. I don't know. People unfollow me just because I tweet too much about boxing, and I will not stop. And I will not stop to fight for boxing. And I encourage each and every one of you, put your money where your mouth is. Go up to Albany. Write your councilman and woman. Write your, write your assemblyman and woman, your senators, your congressmen. Go up there to the assembly. Stand in front of the assembly and say, this is not right. Do you know how much money boxing generates for the New York State, for New York City alone? It's mad money. It's mad Mayweather money. He's gone and we're still bringing in the dough. Let's find the next Mayweather. Let's find the next Tyson. Let's find the next Mark Breland. And let's stand behind them and give back everything they've given to us. Just like my cousin Sixto has always said, boxers step in the ring and put everything on the line for our entertainment. It is time for us to stand up for those fighters now and forever. Save boxing, thank you very much. Uh, last but not least, um, you know, we're in strange political times, so it's easy to lose sight of the fact that we have some tremendous public servants um, working on behalf of us. Uh, I'm a guy from Brooklyn. I don't live in Brooklyn any longer, but I grew up here. This borough made me, and as far as I'm concerned, it's like sort of like, it's like being a lawyer or being the Pope. Once you're from Brooklyn, you're always from Brooklyn. And um, this gentleman is the borough president of uh, this great borough. He was 22 years a uh, New York City police officer. Um, he served in the New York State Senate for a number of years. Um, and this guy's a credit to politics and, and to the borough he leads. Um, we asked him to show his support and be here today. So it's my great pleasure to introduce the Honorable Eric Adams, the borough president of Brooklyn. Thank you, and I, I always say I'm not the honorable you are. I'm not elected to serve, I'm elected to serve. And you know you are on the right stage when you share a stage with Rosie Perez, who is really a voice of advocacy for so many important issues. We love you, and she's straight Brooklyn. You know, straight Brooklyn. Two types of people in America, those who live in Brooklyn and those who wish they could, you know? So you're all fortunate and lucky if you are. What needs to be said was said. Now it's a call for action.
And we have witnessed what happens when you don't move when the call for action is personified and mobilized. Too many people pass legislation and they are more focused on the paper that it is written on and not the people who are impacted by it. It is clear that New York State is the empire state where we build empires and not destroy empires and we're destroying the empires of boxing. The fighters who make their way to this great Barclay Center spend hours and hours in the gym in small fighting venues where they must sell their tickets and inspire people to come and see them in their craft. If we don't do something about this piece of legislation, then those fighters will no longer have the aspiration and dream of fighting here in the city and state in which they love. That is wrong. That cannot happen. That is not we, what we do as New Yorkers. New Yorkers don't follow the agenda. We lead the agenda, and we have to lead it to make sure this le legislation is done correctly. So, Lou, we join you. We're committed to adding our voice to this fight but mobilizing to move this in the right direction, to have a fair way of protecting our fighters, but at the same time ensuring that we have the right insurance premium that would not break the sport. We don't want to knock out boxing in the state of New York, and that cannot happen. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Um, for members of the press, um, Alex Dombroff from my office is around. There are some other people around that know more about the legalities of this insurance issue. So if members of the press need any help, just grab me or one of my staff and we'll help you. Thank you all for listening. I urge you to call, you know, to contact your local um, state senator, your local assemblyman. Um, I urge you to contact the New York State Athletic Commission. I urge you to buy tickets for January 14th to show your support for boxing in New York. And when we do announce the undercard below the two co-featured bouts that we're going to announce today, you're going to see it's chock full of of New York fighters because we're going to put our money where our mouths are. Thank you all, and um, we're going to get started in a few minutes, hopefully. <laughs>